In this video, we're going to take a look at graphing inverse relations. First of all, graphing inverse relations is going to involve graphing some ordered pairs, and then we're going to look at what happens when we take the inverse. And the inverse is simply reversing or switching the x and y values that we were given in the relation. So let's start by graphing our original relation and then we can see what happens as we graph the inverse. Okay, so I'm going to graph those ordered pairs. So 0, 3, that's going to put me right up here. Then we've got 1, 4, be right there. 2, 5, right there. 4, 6, puts me right there. And 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right there. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and connect the dots. So here is my original relation. Okay, now to graph the inverse, all I do is simply reverse the x and y values. Okay, so my new points here are going to be, I'm just going to make a new table to make this really clear. We have, oy, that is an ugly line, I can do better than that. If we take, and I just go like this, there we go. Okay, so I take my x and y values and reverse them. So it's going to be 3, 0, then 4, 1. And 5, 2, 6, 4, and 7, 6. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and graph those values. So let's see what happens. So 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0 puts me right there. Then 4, 1, over 4, up 1. Then 5, 2, right there. 6, 4, it's going to put me up here. And finally, 7, 6, over 7, up 6, puts me right there. Then I can connect those points, and there's my inverse. Now, what we find is when we're graphing the inverse of a relation, the values are reflected over the line y equals x. So let me just throw that in here and we can kind of get a picture of what's going on. So notice how the values, the things that were over here are now flipped over, it's mirrored over that line y equals x. Okay, so that's what's going to happen anytime that we graph an inverse. Now let's talk about the domain and range. Well, the domain of our original function, if we go back to that, is this pink one. And remember, the domain is made up of the x values, so I'm just going to write that up here. The domain is going to be, well, let's take a look here. The x values are left and right, so we have this section right here. It starts at 0, so 0 is less than or equal to x, and then we go all the way over here to 6, okay? So my domain is from 0, oops, forgot my inequality symbol there. Let's get that in there. Z x is um, between 0 and 6, including the, those endpoints. That's my domain. My range is my y values, remember? And here, the lowest one is right here at 3, so 3. And then my largest y value, well, that would be up here at 7. So we're from 3 to 7, including those endpoints. Now, let's take a look at the domain and range of the inverse and see if we can see what's going on here. So my domain is going to be, well, my smallest x value is right here at 3, and then we go over to 7. Hmm. That seems vaguely familiar for some reason. Let's see. Then my range is the y values. Lowest y value is 0. 
and we go up to let's see up to one two three four five six huh that seems familiar too well let's notice notice what happened to my domain and range they're flipped and doesn't that make sense because we flip the x and y values okay to get my inverse right here is my inverse I just exchanged all the x and y values and got my graph. Okay, So, graphing inverse relations, to get my inverse relation, what I want to do is simply switch the x and y values. And when I do that, what I'm going to find is that the graph is reflected over the line y equals x. That's this diagonal line going through right here. Also, what we're going to find in terms of the domain and range, those will be reversed as well. Hope this video is helpful. Keep working hard on your math. You can do it.